Well, let's see how many eggs we have today. One, two, three, four, only four. Okay, who's the slacker? Hi everyone, Lloyd Reber here again on my home on Noah Road in Madison County, Georgia. I'm here at the Chicken Pen to introduce our course's next topic, formative evaluation. Wouldn't it be nice if evaluating instruction was as simple as counting eggs? Of course, even knowing a good egg from a bad egg can't be determined just by counting it. You have to look deeper. Formative evaluation is all about gathering lots of data about the instruction we design to find out if it is any good. This is not a simple matter. There are lots of things to consider. Has anything been learned? How much time does the instruction take? Is the instruction motivating? Also, because a lot of instructional design involves creating educational media, there's a whole range of other variables to consider as well, such as how easy is it for learners to use the materials we create. So formative evaluation usually involves questions of learning effectiveness, learning efficiency, motivation, and usability. There is one main purpose to gathering all this data. That is to improve the instruction. Design, development, and formative evaluation is like a great wheel turning over and over. Each part informs the other in a great revision cycle. The best designers I know understand that good instruction only happens when you involve your audience as early on in the process as possible. It's important to know that in formative evaluation, it is our instruction, not the learners, that is being judged. One of the most important parts of formative evaluation is to design assessment instruments and procedures that match your instructional objectives. Most instructional design textbooks even recommend that assessment instruments be designed as soon as the objectives are determined, even before the instruction is designed. After all, if you aren't careful, you may wind up spending oodles of time coming up with great ways to assess the wrong things. To use an analogy, if someone is sick and has a fever, you want a thermometer not a ruler to take a measurement. Both give you data, but knowing how tall the person is won't give you information on how to make the person well. So be sure to take this part of the course very seriously and pay close attention to what the students participating in your field trials tell you through the data you collect. Be sure you know how many